All right, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you, Judge. I'm sorry, I see a Douglas Mock Cock Coughlin. Mr. Coughlin, what what what's your matter? Because I don't remember calling any case related to that case to you. Judge, he's one of the um he's not a named victim in the indictment for this case, but he was one of the individuals who was affected by um the case, Mr. McGowan's case. And so he's gotcha. just he's just viewing. Okay, just viewing. Can can you hear me, Mr. Mr. Coughlin? Can he can can he hear? Because I addressed him and he didn't. Uh, he doesn't look like it. Responding. Hello, Your Honor. Thank you for seeing me, M Mr. Mr. Coughlin. That that was my client, Judge. I apologize. Okay, I I, I don't know if Miss Caldwell, Miss Miss Caldwell, if he's able to participate because he's not responding, but um. Was he going to speak later? Um, I don't believe so, Judge. Um, like I said, he, he's not one of the victims that's actually named in the indictment. I, I think he just wanted to attend because he was affected by it. All right. You may proceed, Mr. Maloof. Judge, um, Mike Maloof here on Mr. McGowan's um, case. This case um, originated out of the city of Atlanta in September of 2015. Um, in September of 2015, there was an accident it resulted in injuries to multiple parties. Mr. McGowan was um, arrested and cited with three different charges at that time by the city of Atlanta. The first was reckless driver driving. The second was failure to exercise due care. And the third was serious injury by vehicle. Um, he was arrested, posted bond, was released. And then the case was sent by the city of Atlanta to Fulton County originally. They sent it to the Fulton County Solicitor's Office Mr. McGowan went to the solicitor's office on multiple occasions or, or the, the clerk of um, state court in Fulton County was told there was nothing um, proceeding against him. Eventually, the case was transferred to the Cab County District Attorney's Office. Um, my notes indicate that on June or I'm sorry, July 20th, 2017, that's when the case was actually given to the DeKalb <laughs> County District Attorney's Office. Um, they indicted the case on, it was, I believe, June of 2019, three years and approximately nine months after the incident, Mr. McGowan had filed a notice of change of address with the court in October of 2017. The notes that I saw in the system indicated that notice was sent to his old address. I could be mistaken on that, but that's what the system indicates. Um, anyways, Judge, he was not, he never received notice. Um, he moved out of state in April of 2018 to Austin, Texas, more than th about three years from the date of the incident. Um, he has lived there the entire time. Um, he was picked up on May 1st of this year at an airport in Miami um, where he was arrested on these warrants that were issued when the uh, when the case was indicted and he failed to appear at his arraignment. Um, Mr. McGowan, so we filed, we originally filed a motion to recall the bench warrant, then we filed a motion for bond. Judge, um, I'd ask the court to recall the bench warrant. If the court's not inclined to do so, I would ask for a bond. I would ask the bond be set in the amount of $25,000. Mr. McGowan has no prior felony convictions. Um, this is a serious injury by vehicle case. There are three named defendant, or I mean, three named victims in the indictment. Um, Mr. McGowan has not been in any trouble since this incident. Um, again, he has no prior felony convictions. The reason that he missed his court date was he did not receive notice. He attempted to file an, a change of address with the court. It's not reflected in the system. I don't think he's a danger to run. His fiance is actually on this call. Miss Laverick is here. Um, we provided the court with four character letters showing that he has ties to the community, also that he has good character. Um, this is a case where there's not the, the serious injury is not a DUI. It's reckless driving. The allegations were at a particular event. Um, this was a ride, a charity ride, a distinguished gentleman's ride. That's a motorcycle. Um, that's a motorcycle charitable event.
multiple people are driving motorcycles. Um, he was doing what was called surfing, which is you put your feet up on the bike. He was driving a 1943 BSA WM20, so a very old bike. Um, in our bond motion, we indicated that there was a, you can't actually turn the bike off. The way that uh, there was a malfunction on the bike is our allegations. Um, based on all that, Judge, we would ask that he be granted a bond or the warrant recalled or in the alternative granted a bond of $25,000. Um, I think that's reasonable under the circumstances. <laughs> um, I need to be able to speak with him. I've had trouble going to see him at the jail. Um, we're probably going to have to secure an expert on this case. And again, I don't think this was a deliberate skipping court. And he did try and keep a valid address with the court. Um, so that's um, that's our position today, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Caldwell. Judge, Mr. McGowan is charged with four counts of serious injury by vehicle and one count of reckless driving. The facts of the case are that on or about September 27, 2015, Atlanta Police Department officers responded to the area of Glenwood Road and Hass Avenue in reference to a traffic accident. Upon arrival, witnesses stated that they saw a male, the defendant, driving recklessly on his motorcycle, attempting to do a stunt, and subsequently losing control of the motorcycle. As a result, the motorcycle struck a curb and flew into a crowd of pedestrians that were out of the roadway. The motorcycle rider was identified as the defendant, and there were a total of five pedestrians that were injured due to Mr. McGowan's motorcycle colliding with the crowd, um, as well as a few cars being damaged as a result. Those victims include Mr. Roy Thomas, who is on here um, as Steve Thomas. He sustained injuries to his right knee. Mr. Kevin Owens, who sustained serious injuries to his arm, his left knee, his pelvis, and a possible concussion. Paul Bertignall, who sustained injuries to his head and knees. Um, Douglas Coughlin, who sustained minor injuries to his extremities. Anthony Terrebone, who sustained a bruised left leg. Um, and the allegations in the indictment are based on the, the first three of those victims who had the most serious injuries. All injured parties needed to be transported to the Atlanta Medical Center where they received treatment. <clears throat> there were several vehicles that were damaged as a result of this. Um, and victim Owens later did need to have corrective surgery as a result of these injuries. Officers determined the defendant was at fault and arrested him as a result. Um, and Mr. Maloof is correct that this, this case did start um, in Atlanta. It went from the city solicitor to Fulton State Court um, and then to DeKalb County when they realized that venue lied here and that the injuries were serious enough to sustain um, that felony charges were warranted. Um, the case was transferred to our office and indicted on June 18th, 2019. Um, and it, it should be noted that the defendant actually sent a letter to the Superior Court of DeKalb County, and that letter has been provided to Mr. Maloof, um, but he sent a letter on October 24th, 2017, in which he informed the DeKalb Superior Court of his new address at the time. Give me that date one more time. October 24th, 2017. And on that date, he informed the DeKalb Superior Court of his updated address at that time. Um, and so Mr. McGowan was aware that the case was pending here in DeKalb County Superior Court. There was no confusion as to that. He knew how to update his address. Notice was sent to that address that he provided. So notice was proper. The defendant failed to appear at arraignment on July 10th, 2019, and a bench warrant was issued for his arrest. Um, it is the state's understanding that since that date that Mr. McGowan did move. However, Mr. McGowan, there's no record of Mr. McGowan ever updating his address. Um, and based on that prior letter, it does appear that the Mr. McGowan knew how to update his address and knew where the court, where the case was pending. Um, he was arrested on May 2nd, 2023. The bench warrant um, was for, for arraignment, you said? Yes, Judge. Um, and so from that time, 2019 to 2023, until the time that he was arrested, there was never um, any filing that the state's aware of to update that address. Um, the defendant's criminal history consists of a 1990 conviction out of Knoxville, Tennessee, for reckless endangerment in a driver's license suspension, or, or no driver's license. Um, the defendant was sentenced to six months with suspended sentence. In 1999, um, the defendant was fined 
as a result of a driving with a suspended license charge. 2003, um, the defendant was charged with DUI, and there were additional charges added for striking a fixed object, reckless driving, and homicide by vehicle in the first degree. Um, my... What was that? Um, there were additional charges added, including striking a fixed object, reckless driving, and homicide by vehicle in the first degree. However, it is the state's understanding that that case was never actually indicted in Fulton Superior Court. Um, in 2007, the defendant was arrested for aggravated assault out of Fulton that was dismissed. In 2015, he was arrested for this case. Um, he does have a number of cycles of driving, his, driving history, including several convictions for, for speeding, um, and his license was suspended a number of times. The, um, the state is asking the court to deny the motion to recall the bench warrant and hold Mr. McGowan in, in no bond status. Um, however, if the court is inclined to grant a bond, the state is asking for a bond of $125,000 with the conditions of the defendant um, being <coughs> house arrest with an ankle monitor, report to pretrial services within 24 hours, that he not drive well on bond, that he have no contact with the alleged victims in the case. Um, the state's concerns in this case are that the defendant does, it appears that he lacks ties to the community. He currently lives in Florida. Um, and, and that concerns the state. Um, the state is also concerned about the danger of the community and risk of reoffending, just given the, the driving history um, that is present. Um, and I know that that Mr. Roy Thomas, who's labeled as Steve Thomas, is here on Zoom. Mr. Thomas, did you want to address the court as far as Bond is concerned? Yes, I do. Uh, and, and both me and Douglas Coughlin, who apparently is not hearing you, uh, were, were interested in testifying. We were both injured in the incredibly reckless driving uh, he did. Uh, we were we were participants in this charity ride, standing on the curb, and we were all hurt. I, I sustained knee damage, which still affects my right knee and affects my ability to walk well. Um, Doug, I believe, had more serious injuries than I did. And then the, the fellow you mentioned, they had a, there was a young guy who had very Mr. serious. Mr. Thomas, if, yes. if you could pause. Can you, can you hear me? I hear you well. Okay, because I called your name several times. I was trying to stop you from proceeding because I have not sworn you in. Sorry. All right, raise your right hand. Do you testify? The silence were affirmed that the testimony you're about to give to the court is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you die. It is. All right. And what you previously indicated to the court, is that all true and correct? That is all true and correct. You may proceed. You may proceed. So, so thank you. I'm sorry. My name is, I go by my middle name. My name's Roy Thomas, uh, but, uh, you know, legal name. But Steve is my middle name. So, um, yes, yeah, so I was there. Both I and Doug uh, opposed this bond uh, because what, what he did was incredibly reckless. He was standing on the seat of the motorcycle with his arms out in a cross, at going uh, as fast as this old motorcycle would go, probably 50 miles an hour, with uh, hundreds of people lining the street on each side. Uh, and he says there was a mechanical problem. What we saw was he just basically lost his balance, fell off the bike. He tumbled down the street, the bike, so it was a big heavy motorcycle, slid into the crowd. And it was like a chain reaction domino effect affected the young guy whose pelvis was broken, uh, who was mentioned by Ms. Caldwell, Caldwell. And then four or five of us in turn, I was the last one hit, uh, my <laughs> knee was, was damaged. And then, uh, and it's not, a per I mean, it's permanent, but not something they're going to do surgery. And my bike was damaged, which was repaired by someone's insurance. So that's it. We just opposed the bond hearing because he's, we knew he had a long history of crazy and reckless stunts and uh, doing this was he was shunned by the motorcycle community. I believe that's one reason he left and moved to Florida, because uh, essentially everybody in the motorcycle community that I knew shunned him for this action. So that's about all I have to say about it. So, Mr. Thomas, you're saying that this event, you had a mo you were involved. You were there with your motorcycle as well. That's correct. I was on I was on the curb uh, with my motorcycle parked sort of on the curb, between the curb and the sidewalk mm -hmm. uh, and standing, uh, you know, 
as some people were driving go up and down the street. Uh, it was a, like I say, a charity ride. So, um, yeah, I was on this curb. So was Mr. Kaufman. So was everybody that was injured. We were all standing in, you know, in a row on the curb and he hit the first person and it was like a chain reaction. And these motorcycles started tumbling over into everybody. And I was actually hit by a motorcycle that was parked beside mine. Right. Uh, it, it, they all just tumbled over. And that's what that's how I was hit by that bike. It was just parked. Um, so that, that, yeah, that's what happened. Got it. All right. Thanks so much, Mr. Mr. Thomas. Okay, thank you. All right. Anything else, Ms. Cartwell? Nothing else, Judge. All right. Ms. Maloof, you didn't have any um rebuttal. Judge, the only thing I'd say is that um some of what's been represented with speculation um by the victim is my would be my opinion on that. Again, this case didn't get indicted for three years and nine months. He was out on bond. There were no issues since that. There's been no issues for the four years after that. So I think it's reasonable to ask for a bond. He was out on bond. Um, and again, he doesn't live in Florida. He lives in Texas. And he did provide notice of an address. I saw in the system that it went to his old address, but that could be incorrect. Okay. Uh, Mr. Maloof, you're saying you, th you think that the 2017 notice went to the old address, not the address that he had updated. Is that what you're saying, telling me? That That is my position, Judge. But that being said, I don't send the notices. It's what is indicated in Odyssey. And you, to the DA's office credit, they had to rebuild this file because the age they had to get it out of archives. So I got the letter indicating the address change. Um, the address that I saw on the, um, I can tell you right now, Judge, get it right here. Um, the address that he provided as a new one was 880 Shadow Ridge Drive, Atlanta, Georgia. The previous address was 1641 Glenwood Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia. That was the address that I saw in Odyssey. And then again, in Odyssey, it indicated that the, um, the notice was returned um, and it ended the Glenwood. It indicated the Glenwood Avenue address. So uh, he, he posted bond and, you know, he provided like he's supposed to um, even the, the third jurisdiction that had it. So it didn't, it was Atlanta, Fulton, DeKalb. Um, and then, you know, indicted three months or four months before the statute of limitations. There were civil lawsuits filed in this. He participated in, a, in one of the lawsuits. I know that. Um, and was available. What year was the lawsuit that he participated with? It would have had to have been filed within two years, Judge. I don't know when it was settled. I don't think it was actually in DeKalb County. I represented that, um, but I think it, the registered agent, it was actually against the event um, itself the Distinguished Gentleman Club or LLC. And I think they may be registered in Gwinnett. Um, I tried to find that, um, but I couldn't locate it. Um, that's my understanding, Judge. Mm -hmm. is it, would, is it would have been resolved. That he, he indicated he remembered stuff in 2018 regarding that. And Ms. Caldwell, you don't show any arrest after the 15th, I mean, 2015. I do not show any arrests after that date, Judge. Um, and I do just want to state for the record that I am looking at the notice right now that was sent for arraignment. Um, and it was sent to the 880 Shadow Ridge Drive address, which is the address that um, Mr. <laughs> McGowan had provided. What I'm looking at doesn't show that. The one... The, okay, so if the one that I was looking at initially was the arraignment hearing notice for June 20th. Oh, wait a minute. We're looking at July. No. The, so the notice for June 20th. Okay, no, that one is the Shadow Ridge. I believe there's two, Judge, and one was sent to the Shadow Ridge address. Well, my apologies. I was looking at what I could see. I, but there are two of them. You're, But you, Mr. Maloof, there are actually two. They sent it to both. Okay. Um, addresses. So he he the June twentieth did go to his address, um, but the one on the Glenwood Avenue returned as it should. I think was no longer there. 
but the but the shadow ridge did not return, which means that the court has to accept that he received it uh, um, or that there is sufficient evidence for the court to proceed as if he received it, which I often do on these cases, um, unless there's some reasons to the contrary. And then, let me see. All right, so now the next issue was um, he updated on the 7th October, but he didn't get indicted until, what's the indictment date? Let's see, that looks like. Which I believe that was June 18th, 2019. About 19, and about 18 months later, after he changed dresses. All right, and then after the indictment, he got an arraignment notice the following month. All right, and tell me one more time, Mr. Malou, um, when did your client leave Georgia? What, what month are we talking about? Year. We, what I am going to represent, Judge, it's not exact. We're a time frame based on the amount of time that surpassed. I believe it was April of 2018, Judge, but that address at that time still would have gotten the notice and was still a, a valid address for him. So I, I don't know when that, when he cut off contacts with that address. He got divorced, Judge, and that's one of the reasons he left the state and had a job opportunity in Austin. All right. Okay. And where is he currently living now? He lives in Austin, Texas, Judge. I can give you the exact address. Um, one second. I'm going through different files on this. Uh, you don't have to give me the address, um, uh, um, the actual address, but right now your position is he's in Austin, Texas. And what is he doing there? He is a musician judge. He actually plays for um, some, there's several clients he has. They include elderly care places. There are plenty of, he's a six, very successful musician. He's got plenty of gigs and he's traveled throughout the country um, throughout this. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, so he's, he actually plays at the airport in Austin um, once a week prior to this incident. And then the last thing you said that there were civil suits. For which there was one that I'm aware of, Judge. Um, he did testify at a deposition. Um, and I believe that was for Mr. Owens. And he was a witness in that case. This is my understanding, Judge. I've tried to verify this. It's kind of all over the place. I believe the the entity that would have been responsible was this distinguished gentleman's ride or whatever entity owns that i looked that up in the cab it's i didn't find it is a registered or is an llc um but i believe that it may be in gwinnett that's my guess it's where most out of state corporations are incorporated so i i didn't see it in gwinnett either but he did testify and that was in 2018 um the statute of limitations for that would have run on September of 2017. So the suit had to be filed before then. His memory and what he indicated to me was in 2018 um, was when he was testifying for um, or, or called as a witness or defendant in that case. All right, and then my final issue um, for um, matter is his connections to Georgia. Um, judge, on that, there's two letters that I provided. One is one of his relatives, and one is um, a teacher. Um, they both speak to him, you know, when he lived here, saying he was big in the music community. Um, the teacher, Mr. Krugman, was he's a retired teacher. Um, Mr. Uh, McGowan taught him for, for multiple years. Um, both of them indicate, you know, his type of character, that he's the kind of guy that that 
is reliable, would show up. And they both, both of those people both still reside in Georgia. So he still has a footprint here in Georgia, even though he lives in Austin. Um, and again, you know, it, he's even filed something with the court saying, I've changed my address. Now, we can't prove that he didn't get it or did get it. And he had moved from that location. Um, but that location, I think if it there were people there that he knew that he should have forwarded him the notice that I can't speak to what actually actually happened. Um, all I can do is speculate on that. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, I had one more question. I'm sorry. One more question. You, when he was arrested in Florida, what was he there for? Judge, he was actually returning um, into the country from a vacation. Um, and when you come in through customs, it I believe it was a Miami airport. Um, and when you come in through customs, and usually when you leave, um, my cousin actually got arrested because his identity was stolen. Um, not but three weeks ago on something like this, where he was going to Scotland. So I know they run um, warrant checks often at those. So he was arrested in Miami, returning home from a vacation. I believe there was a layover in Miami and he was going to Austin. So he wasn't staying in Florida? No, ma'am, he was not, Your Honor. He was uh, uh, he was traveling through Florida um, and he has traveled, you know, inside the country. Um, I think this was his first time leaving the country since the incident. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'll grant Bond in the case. I'm going to make Bond a little higher because he does not have significant ties to Georgia. Um, and also he has um, been gone here for quite some time. going to set it at seven. And also the seriousness of the charges based on the information that the court has received as, as well. I'm going to set it at 75000 I'm also going to indicate that he is not to, dr to drive. Um, and um, that he is to submit his license to the court. The court will keep it. So he's to submit his license to the court and the court will retain the, the, the license <clears throat> so that he will not be, a, be permitted to drive. And Understood. He yeah. Another license. So he can't indicate that his license has been stolen. They, they're going to be remitted to the court. Understood. I'll inform him of what the consequences would be if he even attempted to judge. Okay. That would be the position that the court will take. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, that's all I have today. May I be excused? Yes. And um, Ms. Laverick, you can log off that his fiance that was on the call. Ms. Caldwell, of the age of the case, you all probably want to start prepping this one up as quickly as possible um, because you're going to lose a lot of, of course, information that's actually for both of you um defense and the state if we wait any longer because usually around the fifth year mark you start the evidence just starts the value of it just dwindles significantly and if you're looking at eight years that's going to be important for you to pre present and move as quickly as possible but luckily for the state you have mr thomas and mr coughlin who are uh, participating and willing to assist, but we do need to go ahead and put that one on a calendar. I'm going to put it back on on a arraignment calendar for next month, Ms. Davis. It's already on, Judge. It's already yes, on. It it's on July 3rd, I believe. Is that correct, Ms. Davis? That's correct, Judge. As well, I just wanted to make sure his address was updated in the system. I, I was checking to see what address it went to. Mr. Maloof, you need to file the I'll, address for your client. I certainly will judge and I'll send his current address right now to Ms. Davis in the private chat. All right, thank you. Thank you, Judge. Um, that's all I have today, may I be excused? 